Hey guys, um, this is future Ellie by the way, uh, but I thought before I would start this video I would explain a little bit about what this video is about and kind of go back in uh, some history a little bit. So hi, I'm Ellie and I have severe gastroparesis. Um, and one of my major symptoms is nausea and vomiting. Um, I've been sick for over 10 years now, and I've just been trying to find ways to manage my symptoms. Um, so I've had multiple doctors tell me about what's called the gastric neurostimulator, and I'll pop up an image right now of what it is. Um, and basically this device, it's not proven to help um, but when you're kind of desperate you're like at least we'll try it and if it helps great if not you know you're just hoping for the best with everything that you try so in uh june of 2022 i went in to get the gastric neurostimulator placed um if i have any images i'll pop them up right now of when i got it placed um at the same time i also got a feeding tube placed um, but that's not going to be part of this video. Um, but anyways, let me tell you about my experience with the gastric neurostimulator. Getting it implanted, it seemed pretty easy. Um, recovery was pretty darn easy. Not a big deal at all. Um, you know, as, um, time went on and they started, like, upping the settings of the gastric stimulator, which... How they do that is they put a magnetic device over the implant and um, they are able to control the settings and the settings go from 1 to 10. Um, of course, they are hoping that the lower the setting, um, the better it is because once the battery wears out, um, you have to have like another surgery to get the battery replaced. Um, so they're hoping it will work for people at a lower setting and not the highest setting because then you'd have to have more surgeries more frequently if it helps for you. However, what happened was is my symptoms actually got worse. I started having like 24-7 nausea. My distension was like all day, all the time. It just never went away. And about when they got to about setting three or four, I started noticing like shocking jolting um kind of zapping sensations and my stomach would kind of pulsate and i will enter a video here of that um yeah so my stomach would just basically kind of contract and pulsate and it was it wasn't painful but it was definitely like uncomfortable because it would be like every like minute or every 30 seconds depending on kind of what setting I had it on and the higher the setting was the more frequently it would just like basically pulsate it was uncomfortable to say the least um so eventually um I had the company come and turn off the device so I had the device for about a year before I had the company come and turn it off um and I remember the guy coming and he wanted to make sure I wanted it turned off. And I was like, yes, please. Like, this is uncomfortable. And he used his device and he turned it off. And literally within about, I would say about three minutes, my nausea just like went away. Like I was feeling like I was going to throw up all the time to like everything was settled. Um, and I knew that that was the issue right there was that the device was actually making my symptoms worse and that's what needed to happen was turn it off now fast forward i didn't really have any plans of removing the device um because it doesn't really bother me just sitting in my body um the only thing is is when i went to the mayo clinic to get further evaluated for my gastroparesis there was some mention of possibly getting an MRI and I can't get an MRI with an implanted medical device. Um, and who knows down the road, I might need an MRI for a different reason completely. And by having this implanted device, even though it is sitting me, sitting in me and not working because I had it turned off, it could be preventing me from 
future testing that could potentially be really needed. So that's when I decided to contact uh, my surgeon and, you know, ask, is it possible to get this removed? Um, and it was, and this is my journey <laughs> of getting my gastric stimulator removed. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Of course, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them um, below in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you guys. Um, but I uh, hope you enjoy and um, yeah, don't hesitate to ask anything. All right, here's my gastric stimulator removal journey, guys. Hey guys, so today is a Sunday, March 10th, and um, it's getting really close to my surgery and my nerves are like here, um, but I am preparing. And today what I did for preparing was going to Trader Joe's and just getting some frozen foods. Normally after surgery, I'm not very hungry, but in the case of, you know, Ellie gets hungry. <laughs> I have some easy stuff in my freezer that I can just pull out and reheat. Um, so that's what I did today. Um, and yeah, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so today is Monday, March 11th. Um, it is currently 12.07. Um, I woke up at about 11. 40 something I think um which means I missed my doctor's appointment this morning and um my mom isn't coming over to help me clean because I don't feel good and that's the reason why I missed my doctor's appointment I felt like I was gonna like puke all night long my gastroparesis flared up because I had tortilla chips and salsa and sour cream yesterday so um, I just, I have a headache. I don't feel good. My sugars were probably super high. And then like, once I fell asleep at like three o'clock in the morning, I, my, my eyes just didn't even want to open. Like that's, that's the high sugar for you. I just can't even open my eyes. I just have to sleep. Um, so I'm just going to take it easy today. Um, Maybe by this evening I can do a little bit of cleaning, but my place for sure is not going to be clean for surgery. It's just not, and that's life. Um, but I can pick things up a little bit, and it'll be as good as it's going to get, you know? Some days, some days, things just don't happen the way you want them to happen, and that's okay. But in the meantime, I'm going to make my coffee and hope it helps my headache. So, peace. So it is Tuesday, March 12th. Um, it is not my surgery day, um, but today I am going to do some cleaning. I'm also probably going to go to TJ Maxx and see if I can find um, like some sweats or some like loose clothing because I really don't have anything. Um, so I'm going to see if I can, I know it's not really like the type of weather outside that like they sell sweatpants so I'm just hoping I can find something like loose fitting especially around my stomach area um because I don't want to wear pajamas to the hospital so we'll see um but today is is cleaning day um make sure my apartment is clean take out the recycling the garbage all that fun stuff um so yeah let's get to it <laughs> Right, guys so I got back from TJ Maxx I did not find any sweatpants that were in my price range they were all over $20 um, or like you know thinner pants type thing I'll just have to deal with what I have but I did find some other good things um, I needed more slip-on shoes 
Um, I like to wear slip-on shoes in the summer and they're just nice to have, especially if you go into a hospital. So, and how cute are these? They have little kitty cats on them. See that? Um, so I got these bad boys, um, slip-ons and they actually have like memory foam on the bottom. So I got those and then I got, I thought this would be really cute for Easter and it was on clearance. I needed an outfit because I'm going to be working Easter. So I thought this with like some jeans would be super, super cute. They had it in purple too, but the purple was in a size small. And I like sweaters like, you know, bigger. So, and the purple is kind of ugly. So I just went with this one. And then another clearance item that I got was another sweater, of course um this little sweater here so yeah this one was $13 and this one was $10 so even though I didn't find any sweatpants I at least got some slip-on shoes to wear and I'll deal with what I have. I might have something like in my summer, summer clothes or something. I don't know, but I'll, I'll find something. Um, but anyways, see ya. Good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, March 13th. Um, not my surgery day. <laughs> um, but today I am yesterday i cleaned my kitchen and my living room and today my mom asked if she could come over and help me clean because i was sick on monday when we originally planned so today is going to be cleaning my bedroom and my bathroom potentially setting up um my balcony areas because it's supposed to be really nice this weekend so i might want to like sit out on my balcony and um and then i need to pack my hospital bag and just get everything ready It's becoming real, guys. It, like, literally is becoming real because my surgery is tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure you could tell by how I'm packing a hospital bag that my surgery is tomorrow. Um, yeah, I should also be getting a call today to tell me exactly what time um, I need to be in. Um, on the patient portal, it says um, 7.20 surgery. But I'm not sure if that means that I arrive at 7.20 and my surgery is at 9.20 because it says to arrive two hours before your scheduled surgery. Or if I have, like, or if it's going to be like my surgery is 7.20 so I have to be there at 5.20 which I don't think they do it that early but I'm not sure. But I'll get a call today about what time I have to be at the hospital. Um, I also have to ask where I'm going because I have no idea where I'm going. Um... Yeah, it's a big hospital and I have no clue where the fuck I'm going. So, um, it's always good to ask when you get the call, like, what floor, what building, where, where do I go? Because I have no idea. And that's, like, one of my biggest anxieties is getting there. And then, like, what if it's, like, 5.20 in the morning that I have to get there and there's, like, nobody to ask where to go? You know, like, ugh. So, anyways, um, yeah, my anxieties are getting the better of me. Um, I'm feeling better because I barely ate it all yesterday. I think my whole body is just kind of in this gastroparesis flare at the moment. Um, and that's been really hard. Really, really difficult. So, today I'm just going to stick with liquids. Um, I don't want to upset my stomach before surgery, so it's just going to be liquid day. Um, and just getting ready. So, wish me luck. Alright guys, so today is the day before surgery, as you already know. Um, and the surgeon gave me two of these packs. They're chlorhexidine cloths. So, um, I have to do one pack of these tonight and just scrub down like kind of like my abdomen area. And then I'm going to do the other pack tomorrow morning um whatever time it is that i'm gonna go in um so yeah let's do this 
Good morning, guys. It is currently 2.55 in the morning. I had my alarm set for 3 o'clock. Um, I have to leave for the hospital at 5. Um, and I always have to get up two hours early um, just to ensure that I'm not going to puke, which is just insane. But that's just my body. I know my body and I know what I have to do. So um, my cats are still asleep, Skylar. And right here, my little girl. And Winston is, of course, down by my feet. They're confused. They just think it's still sleepy time. So, I'm going to get up. I am going to make my coffee. I'm going to take a shower and use the last of the scrub on my stomach and my chest and basically my, ab my, my abdomen, my torso. I don't know what you call it. Um, and then I'm gonna go live on TikTok for a little bit while I'm straightening my hair and braiding it. It's just easier for surgery, I think. And yeah, so that's gonna be my morning and my mom's gonna pick me up at five o'clock. So yeah. Here we go. Oh yeah, by the way, I got like absolutely no sleep. My every time I like started to fall asleep, my heart started racing. So the anxiety is freaking real, y'all. I don't think it helped that I watched like videos on YouTube about general anesthesia and what happens during general anesthesia and like Yeah, but anyways, here goes nothing. Hey guys, so I got out of surgery, I think around nine o'clock. I'm in my room, the pain meds are wearing off. Like I feel okay just sitting here, but as soon as I move my abdomen muscles, it's really painful. Like I couldn't even get into bed on my own. So um, I will unfortunately be staying the night due to pain intolerance, um, but I just got my lunch. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd show you what I get. So let me get to the next clip to show you what I got for lunch. So I was kind of hoping for soup, but I didn't get to pick what I got. Um, but I got turkey, mashed potatoes, and green beans. 1% milk, and over here is an apple crisp. So, And honestly, I'm not very hungry. So I think that's just going to sit there. <laughs> So at this time, dinner had arrived for me and they gave me penne pasta with meat sauce, some garlic bread, a bottle of water, some fresh fruit, and a green salad. So that's what they offered me for dinner. Hey guys. Um, it is the end of the day. Um, it's like 9.20 right now, um, and my surgery went good. I ended up, they were able to do it laparoscopically, which is great. Um, all my laparoscopic scars are actually on one side of my abdomen, which last time they were kind of like spread out throughout my whole abdomen. Um, and then I also have an incision about like that long where they took like the battery part out. So I have an incision and then also the surgeon uh, told me that my belly button just like wouldn't stop bleeding because they used that site and it just wouldn't stop bleeding so that's why the bandage is like covered and you know good morning guys it is friday um march 15th the day after my surgery and um i haven't been taking any type of pain meds or anything like yeah, i'm sore or whatever but it's nothing compared to living every day with gastroparesis. So, um, 
yeah, so I'm just waiting on my breakfast and I get to go home today. I saw the doctors and my sights look good and um, they wanted to send me home with some Oxy and I was like, I don't feel comfortable with Oxy. It makes me sick. And they're like, okay, we'll do some Dilaudid. And I was like, you know, I still have two full containers of Dilaudid from two years ago from a surgery where I never even ended up taking it. It's just a waste of drugs, literally, because I'm not going to take it. Um, so I'm just, if I'm in pain, I'll take Tylenol or, which doesn't really do anything anyway. So I just kind of have not even been taking anything. Um, yeah, but hopefully I get to go home like late morning and continue this recovery and I'll keep y'all updated. Yay! <laughs> guys so I made it home I'm finally home um I'm just kind of feeling sore but nothing nothing I can't handle you know my gastroparesis is like 20 times worse than this will ever be um and also knowing that it will only last a few days you know my gastroparesis symptoms every day all day literally so um yeah I'm doing well I got discharged uh, the hospital I was at had good staff. Um, they were way on top of everything, and um, it was an overall good experience. Now I'm just recuperating, and I haven't really ate much in two days. I'm still not hungry, and I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I'm so achy that it's just like I'm not hungry. Um, I don't know. I might try and take a little bite of something, but yeah, now I'm home watching uh, my 600 pound life because I couldn't watch it when I was in the hospital because my I, my uh, tablet thing didn't work. So um, I'm catching up on all my shows. Um, and my cats were happy to see me and everything. So yeah, peace. Hey guys, so today is the 16th, which is a Saturday, March 16th. Um, I'm still a little sore, but, like, I can, like, literally get out off the couch or out of my bed without having to brace myself using my arms. Um, I feel like I can bend more, and, um, last night I was actually able to sleep on my side, so we're going in the right direction. Um, I think within a couple more days I'll pretty much be good to go, honestly. Um, I still don't really have an appetite, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, but yeah, I'm doing really well. So, um, I'm happy. I got to take a shower today. I took off my bandages. Um, and then in another week I can take off the Steri strips that are holding my, um, incisions closed. So yeah. And, uh, today my mom is going to come over she wanted to make me cookies, so we're going to have cookies and coffee on my balcony because it's going to be like 70 degrees outside. Um, so yeah, it's a good day and it's nice to be home. I have my own coffee. So yeah, anyways, that's just the update. See you all later. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It is Sunday. It is four days post-op, um, and I am doing well. Um, I am up and about walking around. Um, I was able to sleep a lot better last night. Every day, it's just improving and improving, and I'm more mobile and more mobile, um, but pretty easy recovery, honestly. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what's up. Now I'm going grocery shopping. Happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. Peace. Hey guys, today is Monday, March 18th. 
Um, I am doing a lot better today. Um, like every day it's just getting easier and easier and easier. It was never really that hard, but, um, yeah, just a very, very slight, slight, slight discomfort. Like I feel like I can just do anything and I'm trying so hard, you know, to not do stuff that I know I shouldn't be doing. Um, I, I'm having a hard time not cleaning out my cabinets and organizing because it's starting to annoy me and I feel like I can do it but I know they said don't do anything like that for like a month so I'm just like but I feel like I can do it and I want to do it but Ellie listen to the doctors um so yeah um that's kind of what's up um I'm probably gonna walk to Starbucks today um, later today I might make some banana bread. I have some old bananas. Um, I also, my Steri strips were starting to fall off because water was accumulating in them. So I'm able to see my incisions, which are pretty much healed, like magically, magically. Um, so everything is looking really, really good. I'm feeling good. The only problem I'm having is with food. My gastroparesis, just like usual. I ate kind of for the first time just a little bit yesterday and this morning and last night. I felt like I was going to puke all night and all this morning. So starting to feel a little bit better now that I'm kind of moving around and things are waking up. But damn, gosh, your priest is it freaking sucks. So yeah, um, that's kind of my plans for today. And yeah i think by tomorrow or the day after it's just like gonna be like ellie never even had surgery it's crazy it's crazy how the body heals very crazy and very cool all right peace out hey guys so it is monday evening now and i did receive a call from a hospital the nurse checking in to see how i was doing and I told her recovery has been really, really easy, surprisingly, and I told her that day two out of the hospital, I was installing a brand new toilet seat, which I knew the doctor would say no to, but I did it anyways, because that's how good I was feeling. Ellie. <laughs> um, but I did tell her that my appetite has just not really been there, and... She told me I just need to focus a lot on protein and just try and kind of force myself to eat, which I did a little bit yesterday and I felt so sick. And then I'm like, I'm going to try it again. Maybe my body's like woken up more. So I ate a little bit and here I am like five hours later feeling like I'm going to puke. And I'm just like, fuck my, mm, part of my French. I hate gastroparesis. I never get a break. It's like the surgical pain doesn't hurt, but my gastroparesis is always going to be there and it just sucks. Um, so yeah, I had that phone call and uh, I ended up making the banana bread. So I got that done. I've been um, watching Lifetime movies, trying not to do a whole lot. Um, but tomorrow I'm going to do a Costco run with my mom and we're going to go just on a flat surface park and go on just a short walk. Because it is going to be like 70 degrees and nice outside and I do need my vitamin D. And I just can't be co cooped up here and that's kind of like the least stressful thing I can probably be doing. Because there's a lot more I want to be doing that I know I shouldn't be doing. So yeah, I mean I think tomorrow I'm pretty much going to be, you know, pretty much back to normal. So I might just cl cut the vlog here um, while I can and... Um, um, yeah, so I'm doing well, doing well, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and, you know, now I kind of wish that I did, oh, what is it like to get a gastric stimulator placed, but, um, at least you know what it was like for me to have one, and my journey through having one, and my journey through it being removed, um, but yeah. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, again, uh, feel free to leave a comment, um, or you can follow me on TikTok, which I will link down below, and uh, yeah, I share a lot of my journey on TikTok, so if you want to follow me there, feel free. Um, I also have an upcoming visit to the Mayo Clinic, so 
Um, a lot is happening in the near future, but Ellie is on the up and up, and that's all I could hope for. And Winston agrees. So, yeah. Make sure to follow me and Winston. <laughs> all right, peace out, y'all.